morning. It is Tuesday. We have a little bit of an echo here today, I hear. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Oh, we are doing our last show for the season today. So every season, if you haven't, if you haven't watched long enough, um, you might not understand. We do 11 weeks and we do two weeks off. So the next two weeks we are off, just so you know. But this is the last one we're doing here in our studio. So we're just before the holidays and then Hawk and I are getting ready to hit the road. So So Together Tuesday, is, we did a um, like a brief tour, I guess you would call it, in uh, July, August, September, yeah, of... Oh. Um, of this year and it went so well we're doing it again we're very excited we'll be kicking it off in january if you hang on until the end we'll tell you all of those um fun places that we're going but it makes everything today a little bit different so um yeah normally i have a whole bookcase full of stuff behind me and lots of samples and today the bookcases are gone the samples are packed up and it's so blank wall so. <laughs> and the echo isn't from technology. It's just the fact that we're in a giant empty room. <laughs> <laughs> Our apartment, our, we have a loft here in Los Angeles and it is completely empty now. So um, kind of a strange day, but I'm excited that you're here to kick off this final one. We wanted to do something that was going to, so we, we picked this project for two reasons. One is it shows off our Lux, our Lux Cuddle Mink, which is a super fun fabric. And also it's a nice um, Christmas new year's project you could use those for both of those and it's for you so we wanted to have something that was not just a gift but something that you could wear so today we are making a lux cuddle mink stole and i'm very excited about that so we um talked back and forth we talked about this just this morning is it a shrug or is it a stole is it a scarf is it a wrap um you could call it a wrap or a stole would be um totally valid names for it. Um, I did a little bit of research into it and a shrug actually has some sort of sleeves. So this one is a stole because it's just a wrap. Okay. So and we don't have a inside. picture of how it's going to turn out. Because you're going to see it at the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I made one the other day that I did. I had to choose just fabrics that I have left because everything is getting packed up. So today we're using the fancy fabrics. Okay, you can download this pattern. It's just a one sheeter that we've got for right now, um, and it is available on our uh, website. So if you go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you'll be able to find the blog post for this one that has the little pattern in it. It is super duper easy. And while we're using the Lux Cuddle Meek today, you could actually use any of the Lux Cuddles. I was thinking about it this morning and wondering if the uh, Lux Cuddle Milan would work for this. And I think it would. Um, you just wanna measure that one on stretch. So, Anyway, thoughts. It could be super fun to do this out of a bunch of different fabrics. So do what you will. I wanted to do it out of the mink because I think the mink is so beautiful. So let me show you. I have, if you want to come in here interject. and look. What happens if we share the video? What happens if we share? The oh, see, you're so good at this. Um, you should share <laughs> the video. So if you share the video, we are giving away a prize at the end. We'll be giving away a cuddle kit and you will be entered to win as long as you share the video. So go ahead and share it um, on Facebook. Um, you can share it from YouTube too, I think. I believe so. um, and let us know you shared it and you'll be entered to win. Okay. So at the end, we'll pick a winner and you will get a free cuddle kit. And then we have videos that go along with those. So you can learn how to sew with this stuff if you don't already love it. Okay. All right. So the mink is fabulous. All right. Here we go. Okay. So I want to show you this because it is a different fabric. Look at how just yummy that is. So I really want to make this out of black because I see, I think it's super elegant for New Year's Eve. But as you can kind of see, black does weird things on the camera. So... I well, chose. it might just be hard to see the stitches or what have you. It's hard to right? see the stitches and it messes with the, like my hands get real blown out until it figures it out. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. The, the black and white. Auto, auto contrast kicks in. Yeah, exactly. And then it like messes up and I don't want to do that. So we are doing it just with the rose water. So this is the one that we're using today, which is honestly like one of my favorite colors that we've got. We've introduced one maybe a year ago. We introduced the rose water and uh, it's just gorgeous. I love this color. So, uh, Anyway, so this is what we're using today. I We wanted to have, you need a yard of the Lux Cuddle Mink or the Lux Cuddle that you're using and a half, half a yard? Yes, a half a yard. Sorry, I have to think for a second of the other one. Okay, so the first thing we did, I cut these out a little bit. You're going to want to cut out two pieces. So you take a yard, cut it in half to make two 18-inch strips. This is totally variable. So that 18 inches 
if you were making it and you wanted it to be smaller, you could make it 16 inches. If you wanted it to be bigger, you'd buy a little bit more and make 20 inches or 24 inches. Just really depends on what you want to do. I will say that the mink is a little bit heavier fabric. So the backing on it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't crumple so much. Do you see like it, it kind of folds more than it crumples? So you wouldn't want to get too big. Does that make sense? I could show I think another. So. It's kind of the like how how is it going to drape in the end? Right, exactly. Let me find my pink. What did I do with that? Oh goodness, what did I do with my pink? Um, I don't know if this is it. I should have been folded sitting here. I must have knocked it down somewhere. This crumples. This is what I'm talking about. This so will this crumple up. This is the up. same color. This is C3, and it, it crumples up, and this does not crumple as nicely. Okay, it has a little bit, it has more body to it. Got it. So that's what I want to differentiate the two. So this one, you wouldn't want to make it too wide, like an infinity scarf. You could make that with any of the cuddle, and it twists around, and it's all yummy here. This one would kind of stand up further. So the same thing goes with the, if you wanted to make a large one that you kind of like wrapped around too much, it wouldn't get too small it wouldn't crumple very well when you brought it around okay so just helping so you think about it how wide you want to make it and also where's my little is piece? that the piece you tossed over there it might be yeah oh yeah yeah, right, yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna try to keep the camera on <laughs> and i'm gonna try to reach down over here is that is when that i was like thing? oh i don't need that you piece of fabric that? there you go i did actually need that piece of fabric let me make sure this is the right one. So this piece should be 18 by 30 inches. Yeah, that was the one I wanted. Okay. okay. So this one is 18 by 30. The others are two 18 inch strips. So check that one. There, there we go. go. Now the right one has been tossed. <laughs> so crazy. It's been a lot. Um, so the rose water and the rose water, we wanted these to be the same because you're going to be able to see this fabric. So if you get them the same, you won't see it very much. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about why I chose those fabrics at the end. Okay, so first off, we have our fabrics, 18 by 30 and two 18 by 60 inch pieces. Now the Lux Cuddle Mink, it has, let's talk about this because there's definitely some questions. So if you look down the end here, you can see that we have some really long nap and then we get this part right in here that is literally just the backing fabric. Okay. Got it. That's what causes it to do this thing where it rolls in here mm -hmm. and causes that mink look. Okay. That is perfectly normal. All right. So um, we want to, um, sorry, I was trying to look at the comments really quick. Um, so we want to make sure that you understand that that's normal. That's not a manufacturing defect, which we definitely have heard before. It's absolutely how we made it so that it will do this thing where it has the lines in it. Okay. That said, this actually comes in handy sometimes because this is super skinny. So this is really thick with all the, the nap. And then you have this little skinny part here, which can be a little bit easier to sew on some machines. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of cool. What I did is I cut it off on both ends. I cut off the one, the last strip, and I'm going to do it on this one. All right. And I did it for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to have that, that little edge that I could sew on because it's a little bit easier. And then I also wanted to cut off and we realize that like, you can't really see too much on here, but sometimes with the mink there's a discoloration with how this is the selvage so where it's put onto the big rollers as it goes through the machine so normally like on your selvage you have that strip of print if it were cotton and on here we just have a strip that is a little bit discolored in that it's lighter okay and that's that's fairly common on the mink i did look on the black and i will show you if i can find the ends of it there it is the black there's nothing it goes right up to the edge. The plumb line was the same. So it's not it's not uh, on all of them, but some of them, I think some of the, the middle colors, it Got does it. this a little bit. So that's partly why I want to cut it off. But also this strip isn't the same width as this strip because it's just the selvage and it's thick. So I'm just going to cut it off. All right. So that's what we're going to do first. I marked it basically where the uh, fibers end. And I just kind of looked through it. So what I found is that I can't really tell. And when I'm cutting it here, because the fibers are so skinny, 
might not be the right word for them, so thin, that it's hard to tell where they are. So I'm just sliding my little scissors. So these are the micro serrated scissors from Karen K. Buckley. So I would suggest that you get micro serrated. I chose these this time because the blade is longer than on my Femori. That blade is about this long and I wanted to slide this under and cut a little bit more. Okay, so we've talked about it before. We always say micro serrated by Fomore, Karen K. Buckley, Kai. And I really do use all of them for different purposes. Okay, so there you can see it's, I missed just a little bit. It still has the, the fiber stuck to it. So I'm gonna go over just a little, try to cut those fibers off. And I'm just gonna cut up. And if I cut a little bit of the fibers off of this and give it a little haircut, I'm okay with that because it's just this edge I'm gonna throw away. Okay, so now I have this little, the edge of just the backing, okay? All right, and if you have any questions about this, please do post up there and Hawk will share the comments. I'm watching. Hey, look, I have my little roller thing that I got at Quilt Festival. Oh, that thing is super fun. It's kind of full now. What's uh? I don't know anything about it except I that I got it at Quilt Festival. The name of it either. All of a sudden, the, but the, it does the, actually the work pretty well. The green gooey roller thing. It does actually work pretty well, and it's quieter than the vacuum, so that's why I'm using and, it. And to reuse it, you it, just uh, basically just rinse just it under hot, it off. Wa yeah. hot, hot water, or warm water, and it goes right back to being sticky again. Super crazy. So both of these now have the ends cut off, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew these two together. So these are my 18-inch strips by with the fabric, basically. And now I'm going to need to figure out which way my nap goes. My nap goes this way on this one. This way on this one. So I'm going to sew these two ends together. Okay. This project is a little bit funky because it's it's a long one. So we're going to sew these together and it's going to be like 115 inches or something long. Okay. So I'm going to squish my nap out of the way. And I'm going to pin this. Okay. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pin the other end because that's what we do. I'm just trying to squish that nap out of the way a little bit. I will get some tucked in there and then I can go over with my stiletto and bring it back out. Okay, and I'm actually gonna pin just at an angle because I think if I'm pinning with this fabric, I wanna hold that, uh, that flat part without the nap. I wanna hold that together really nicely. I think this kind of pinning will work a little better for me. So we didn't prep anybody on using uh, that we were going to use that green gooey roller. So if anybody knows what the <laughs> green gooey, gooey roller's brand name is and wants to share it in the comments so that folks can find it, that would be great. Otherwise, um, you know, go to go to it, festival next it, year. It, it's, a, it's a mystery item, and it'll be there. <laughs> they always are. I just picked it up this year, but I'll try it. Um, I'll, I'll share another when we got the little hand roller one we also got a big one for the floor that's on uh, a telescoping pole uh, which also works really really well yeah uh, especially getting it off of carpet uh, cuddle uh, dust off of like carpeted floors and stuff mm -hmm. yeah we're always looking for ways I mean generally I use my little vacuum but it is kind of loud for the videos so I try not to do it. So this is a totally different pinning than I usually show, huh? I'm I'm trying to understand what's trying going to process. On. Yeah. Basically, what I'm doing, why I'm pinning it like this, is because I can pin it in and out of the fabric and hold it back a little bit. I can hold the nap back a little better. So diagonal pinning. Diagonal pinning. All right. Yeah. That. Okay. We're gonna call Make. it double pinning, but it really is just on this little area that I'm trying to hold it differently. Okay. So that said. I think I'm going to put a couple of pins on the side. Okay, because do you see how this doesn't really, this distorts. So that's what I'm trying to do is avoid some distortion because this, this tended to distort it. As soon as I stuck the pin in, it did weird things. So here I can get it nice and flat and I stick the pin in and it got a little weird. Okay. Okay. So it, I feel like it'll be easier for me to sew it this way. So really, 
we just try things. This is so puffy. So I'm gonna pin over here. There's your there's your second row. Yeah, and this will just hold the way it out there. Got it. This will just hold it a little bit. These pins I can stay in until I get real close. So we're gonna give it a try. Okay. I just know the other day when I was doing it, it was um, frustrating me slightly. Okay, so we're gonna come over and sew. I'm gonna use a three and a half stitch length. Um, I did or on a straight stitch on a straight stitch. So we're doing a little bit of experimenting today because when I was sewing it the other day, I was like, this sews differently because of the variation in nap, because there's a flat spot and then a thick spot. Okay. So what I'm wondering, which is why I have my foot here, just in case is that I'm wondering if it would actually be easier at times to use the zipper foot. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick my foot down and I don't actually want a whole half inch seam allowance because it will take all of that off, but I'm just going to push my needle over. I you got a little go needle shift. Yeah. I got a little needle shift. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get that to come down where I want it to. I'm going to shift it some more. It's three and a half. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So what I want to do is sew it here and this should get it so that it goes a little bit closer to my edge. But because there is this variation in height, it's a little weird. So it's like a scant half inch. Right, like I feel like, you know how we had the hump jumper that we used on the other things? You can see how much space is under there. So even in the front, you can see how this one comes up over and this one has a bunch of gap. Got it. Okay, so that's something that you're gonna have to kind of work with as you're coming through here. So I'm going to get my stiletto so I can hold things over and keep that edge even. But it is it does make it a little bit um, different to sew with than the other Lux cuddles that are much more of a consistent nap. Hey, Leah, she's using uh, a baby lock crescendo. Uh, it is absolutely her favorite. However, there is one of our videos where she compares uh, several different sewing machines at different price points, including her vintage uh, featherweight, and they all sew minky. They all sew cuddle just fine. You just, uh, you know, she shows you what needs to change on each machine in order to make it sew the best. Okay, so this doesn't want to hold the two layers together as well as I want it to, but I'm just going to let it move over. You see that what's happening? So you see how when I let this go, peek, Pops right over. Um, so I can't keep those edges as even as I want it to with that style of pinning. So it's going to be, you know, you pick your thing that you want more, your edges even for it, you know, not to be distorted. I'm checking, I'm, you know, picking my edges aren't even and I don't care. Nobody's ever going to see it again once we sew it. So it's fine. Um, all right, let's see how that works. Oops. All right. Take these pins out that held it just a little bit. My somewhat crooked seam. Might go back and fix that. Okay. But sewing it with a little bit of this in here, there's that little edge. I still have a little bit of that backing flat spot in here that when I open this up, oh, it, it looks a little bit. Oops. It maintains the the um that texture. It maintains that look God, for here. Looks great. Okay. So that's, that is part of why I wanted to cut it off that way is so that it could actually maintain this. Because if you were to sew this here, you would have a seam down the middle, but you wouldn't have a, have a gap. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of pull that out from under there. The one that the stuff that was caught in there. I'm just going to pull it up a little. I'm not even looking. I'm just, Scraping it along in there. Okay. All right, so now we have a really long piece that is, like I said, 18 by like 115 or so. Okay, beautiful. The, back to some basics. The the crescendo has the digital dual feed, mm -hmm. which is uh, basically crescendo's version of a walking foot. It's more Correct. Of, more of a belt drive. Yes. Than than a feed dog situation. Yes. So a regular walking foot works. A walking great too. foot will work just fine. And yep. it's super recommended. It's just part of the how this is built. Okay. So now I've got my piece. So I've got my really long piece. It's all. Is show it. It's all. You know. 
done up here. There's a whole long, it just keeps going. 15 inches okay. of mink. So <laughs> of, I'm just going to keep Ish. it nicely over there. All right. Now I'm going to pet my fabric. Make sure the nap is going the right direction. I'm going to sew this on to here. Okay. So let's see if this sews better if I just do it regular. See, this is the joy of doing numerous seams. We're going to try it all out. Okay, and again, we're using the clover flower head pins to do the double pinning here. We try to pin this along this edge and then over a little. Okay. Actually, I want to get this. I want to work from one end. One of the things we, we haven't talked about it in a little while, the double pinning. And if you pin at one end and pin the other, um, it's a little bit easier to keep your fabric in the right position. What happens a lot of times is if you do what I was starting to do there, where you kind of work your way across, you end up pushing the fabric unintentionally and you get to the other end and they don't match, even though you measured and you checked and they matched, but now they don't. That's why. Okay. So if that happens to you, that's usually the reason is because it kind of pushed as you went. Okay. So this is slightly different because we're sewing C3 to cuddle three to the Lux Cuddle Dimple, or Lux Cuddle Dimple, what? Lux Cuddle Meek, my brain. Well, we haven't okay. worked in dimple, with Dimple in a, a long time. Yeah, a long time. I don't know where my brain got that. The archives. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different fabric I haven't sewn with me too much either. I have seen it in blankets and it's beautiful in blankets. So if you love making throws, this is, as you can imagine, a gorgeous blanket. And you can absolutely sew two sides together and have a gorgeous blanket. All right, let's do this one. So we're going to sew this. And I'm going to do this the same. So it's going to be a little bit shy of two in, or a half inch uh, seam allowance. And again, with a 3.5 millimeter straight stitch. Yes. So actually, I'm going to bring this down to a three on here because I did a 3.5 and it was a little bit looser than I want it to be. So we've talked about it and in that um, the show that you were referring with the machine variation, we talked about it in that I can say it's a 3.5 on my machine and your machine may do a perfect stitch and mine did a little bit bigger stitch. Uh, it really depends on both the machine and the person sewing how long those stitches are. So just try to get it so that it's a nice um, tight stitch. I mean, strong stitch, so it's not super small. But also, you want to make sure that they are not tiny stitches. Because tiny stitches take longer, and they're awful when you have to take them out. Not that anybody ever plans for that. No, but we all know <laughs> it's going to happen. As hard as we try to be perfect, it's not always happening. Okay, I'm going to go back here, do a little back stitch, cut my thread, and take it out. Let's check that seam. Okay, that one, oops. that one is a good one. So see these stitches right here? See if you can get in there and see those stitches. That's a good length right there. And you can see it wobbles a little. And part of that is because it is the, um, the thick versus thin. So when I'm sewing these two together, you see the difference in nap length. It's vast, okay? So if you get a little wobbly seam, it's okay. I'll show you how it turns out on the other side. Like nothing ever happened. Okay. Very nice. Beautiful. Nobody can ever tell. All right. Now we're going to go to the other end and we're going to sew this into a loop. So this is where you can get yourself in trouble by giving yourself a little Mobius twist in there which we don't want to do. So I'm going to put this no on No infinity my, stalls. No infinity stalls. So I'm just folding this over so that this is the part I'm going to pin together with the other side. And I'm just going to work my way over here along the top. If I can get the camera up a little higher. Okay. Okay, so now I've got it. So now it's going to be looped over. So I just worked my way. So this is the top and it's going to go to the top here. All right. So again, same thing. So let's try it this way, because last time we sewed it with the cuddle on the bottom, the cuddle three on the bottom. So this time let's sew it with the cuddle three on top. No, vice versa. Last time we did the cuddle three on top, let's do the cuddle three on the bottom. Got it. 
probably should get more sleep. And we're going to compare and contrast. (laughs) And we're going to compare and contrast. Exactly. Because sometimes it makes all the difference. I usually do the squirrelier one on top because I have, then I can control it more with my stiletto. Uh, So that's why usually I would do that if I wanted to. So if we do this and we decide that it's better with the C3 on top, the next time when I pin it, I would just pin it this direction. I would pin it from this side. Okay. So you can always, you can always flip it around and redo the way that you pin it. All right, so pin in between here. Get that as flat as possible. So for me, the straight seam isn't as important as trying to make sure that the ends match. So this is where um, you can have more problem is if you start to, um, start pinning at one end and move to the other and then they don't become the same lengths. That's more of an issue. So make sure that you're pinning in a way that lets that stay. That is just dense right there. Okay. So then I just, you can see they look like they don't match. I just move it, make a match. Pinning in between. Did you have a chance to try the Wonder Clips on this at all? I haven't, but also I think that with the two um, being different, I feel like that that edge of thickness that you get might make it not hold very well. I don't feel like the, the Wonder Clips hold as much as I like. So maybe on this edge, I could do Wonder Clips here and still do the second row of pins. Mm-hmm. And that might work okay. But I feel like Wonder Clips for me work better when I'm using the same fabric on both sides, particularly a, um, a Lux Cuddle. But I actually don't use the Wonder Clips that often. I like them for holding It seems like things. a good tool for, um, I'm going to, I guess, more like production sewing, right? Where like your long straight seams where you're just cruising. Right, and if you, you do that second row of the um, the actual pins, it'll hold it pretty okay. I just don't, yeah, I think they're one of those things that people people either like a lot or they don't use as much. I think like, it is one of those things, like you become very familiar with how to use them. Sure. And uh, I'm so used to pinning this way that it works really well. But yeah, I know a lot of people who use them uh, almost exclusively sort of noticed generally when so when we're sewing these projects that about two thirds of your time is spent cutting and pinning and one third of your time is spent actually running the sewing machine. So, yeah, that's probably true. Um, it's, it's really a, a lot of a lot of it is about how you prep. Yes. And making a diff- it makes a difference in how well you prep in the beginning. It'll be uh, easier if you do more. I know in, sometimes in classes, we've had um, people who don't want to pin and then they'll try to do it without pinning and then have to spend a lot of time taking things out. And I would rather spend my time pinning in the first place. Okay. That's really kind of what we want our stitches to look like, even with the wobble in there. Okay. So some nice clear stitches is what you want. If they are too tiny, Re- reset your machine, try to do some things differently. All right, so come back around to the front and we will do the next step, which is more pinning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so now what we're gonna do is a couple of things. I'm going to mark my centers and I'm just gonna fold this. I'm gonna find my pen. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to fold this and I'm going to stick a little pin in here where these two match just so I can let go and come over here. Okay, so I'm trying to get this to be even without stretching it. I'm going to make a little mark. Right, I'm going to do the same thing. That's my center mark. So I'm going to put my pen down just in case because that seems dangerous to hold that while I'm working with this fabric. I know myself too well. I've got an extra hand. I'm going to keep it Thanks. Rolling. Just keep it keep over it there. Rolling around. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pin that in position and then make this come over, meet, and make a little mark where my center is. Okay, so on the cuddle three, we need to make a mark for the center. On the Lux cuddle, the mink, we don't have to because there's a center 
where we did the scene. So let's go back over and find that. It's here somewhere. Okay. I'm going to fold that open and I'm going to come back over to find my mark. And I'm going to put these two together. So basically I'm putting my centers together. So this is the center of the C3. This is the center of the Lux Cuddle. Okay. Now, if you remember, these are two almost 60 inch pieces that are sewn together. And this is a 30 inch piece that's in the middle. Okay, so it's going to do a, a little bit of a funky thing, and that's what makes this one um, kind of different. Okay, so I've got that pinned. I'm going to go ahead and come along here and pin. Oh, wait, is this my bottom? Oh, it is. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pin a few spots here. Then I can come back and double pin a little bit easier. Okay. Is this making sense? I think so. Okay. Okay. So one of the things too is I realized if I do this and I do it right, it will always land on a on a not not this part at the end. So we don't want it to do this at the end. Oh, when right. these come over here, we want it to end up on a fold. We're in the middle, sort of in the middle. In of, the middle somewhere. Uh, yeah. Okay. Does that mean you have to count odds and evens? I didn't. It's worked out fine. Lucky. It's worked out fine with the um, the samples that I did. And I tried it three different times and it worked out just fine. I think it's because those those humps are so big. Okay. You have some some leeway there. It would be, it would be super surprising to end up with uh, one of those little bare spots right at the yeah. end. Yeah. And if it was, I would probably shift things around just a little. Okay. Do ease, a little. Ease it out. Ease it out. Ease Move it over in. just a little. Right. And it's slightly differently. Okay, right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double pin this. And then we're going to deal with the bottom because this is the bottom. I petted the nap. And the reason I thought, oh, is this the bottom of the nap? Because the nap wants to come down this way. And we want to put the turning hole at the bottom of the stool. So that if it's ugly at all, <laughs> it hides. Huh. Sometimes it is. Oh, you know what? I don't think I have a hand sewing needle. I think I probably packed them all away. So we just have to talk about it today. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back here and we're gonna basically use all of my pins. So I brought out I brought out the big guns today. <laughs> I dumped out my whole 100 pack of pins plus all my other pins that were there already. So we've got plenty of pins to use. All right. So yeah, I like to uh, I see you folks coming make in, sure it's in well pinned. late. What's that all about? Was there some other <laughs> live on this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Do we just get a little in? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming. So good. Always happy when people hear. Obviously, okay. you'll be able to go back and watch the beginning later. So you're right. fine. You're, you're fine. <clears throat> totally. Okay. <laughs> Linda appreciates the state of our house when those hand sewing needles hang. <laughs> I'm sure she does. <laughs> as it should be. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to come along here. It just does mean that I can't quite finish that. Okay. So now, now I'm going to come up to you. Well, I'm going to pin just a little bit more. Sorry. And then I'm going to make my hole on the other side of this for my turning gap. So this is the same way we do turning gaps on all sorts of things. All right. So we're going to do that little like stay stitching line. So if you've seen this before, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, this works really well. Okay. So basically I'm going to take this, take this pin out so that I can still put these back together, but that pin won't get in my way so much. Basically, I want to put enough that I could get my fingers through. So I'm going to put my hand here and I'm going to make another mark over here. Okay. Now, put these up again with my middle. Come over here and mark the mink side with that same little line. Okay, so both of them are marked at about my hand width. 
Okay. So this, what I'm doing is marking myself a turning gap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to sew a line from here to here on either side of these fabrics. Okay. And this will be our turning line. So really when I sew this, I'm actually going to sew just past it because I want, I want to catch this. So I might just move over just a little bit because I want to make sure and catch my seam. Don't put it directly on the seam. Okay. Make sure that you start just a little bit past it. That gives you at least a guideline so that you will make sure and have them both. Okay. So and I'm going to move my needle back over and sew like a normal person now. Stick this back in the middle. All right. And now it'll be much more of a actual half inch seam allowance. Okay. So I'm just going to stitch right along here. And I'm going to raise my foot. Who's that knocking at our door that doesn't know we're doing a live show? <laughs> it might you guys be. can't hear that, but somebody <laughs> downstairs knocking. is knocking at our door. Okay. So there I've got my, uh, my stay stitching line in there. I'm going to come back over here and do the exact same thing with this edge. Okay. Shift just a little. Come right down here and do another line. All right. Oops. Got to cut the thread first. That helps a lot. All right. So now I've got a line and I've got a line over here. It's a little harder to see on this one. I'll be able to feel it though, and that will help me get a straight seam when I later hand stitch this close. All right. So now I will finish pinning this. So I'm gonna stick a pin in there. Actually, I should probably just stick one the other direction and move that over slightly. Okay, because this is where this is where my my end is. I'm gonna move that over slightly to remind myself. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stitch and I'm going to stop here and do a little back stitching. Come off. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so this is now my new like end, right? I'm going to move that over just a little there. Okay, and now I need to work this all the way over again. So doing the same thing that we did here, right? I'm going to pin, go across here with some big, big gaps. All right. Get any questions up there? Okay. Oh, wow. Hey, nice. Vicky's back. Vicky. Hi, Hi Vicky. Vicky from Scotland. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Yeah, this fabric is really absolutely gorgeous and it's not difficult to work with. It's just a little bit um, different. That, that middle, these little divots in there are the weirdest thing about it. So you're basically right now, you're perpendicular pinning to make sure that uh, those line up. I'm not necessarily lining anything up except for the edges. I want to keep the edges even as I get across. And that whole thing where if I start double pinning and I get over here, it's going to push and be weird. So okay. right now I'm kind of pin basting for okay. lack of a better, a better phrase for it. So this one, this is the one that we're seeing. It's, it's real close to that. Uh, so I'm actually going to shove this just a little and make it ease a little bit more. So that will require me to use my stiletto to kind of shove a little bit extra in. Which sometimes I got to do. All right. So now I can do all these crazy pins. It's a ton of them. So maybe on the next one, I'll grab my, my book O stuff and see if the wonder clips work on this long edge. Okay. Yeah. Because it would be one, it will be quicker. And two, it'll answer that question for people. Okay. 
So I guess the, there's a, there's some questions uh, like sort of uh, unrelated to the sewing, but related to the sharing. So if you share on Messenger, I I would I would bet that that would show up in our list. Basically, if, if you it, hit the share button, if you hit the share button, we can see it. If yes. you share some other way, be sure to shout out in a comment that you shared in some other way, and we'll make sure that you kind of. Your name gets added into the hat. Right. Yeah, because if you hit the share button and do it via to a group or your mother or you know a uh, your page, it'll all it'll all come in there. Okay. All right. That's where I have to ease it. I shoved it slightly off. Okay, so now here we go. Are ready? It's gonna be a doozy. It's a doozy of a seam because it is long. It is now what we had 60 and 60 and 30. Mm -hmm. What is that? 120, 150. 150 so, so it's about 70 allowance. inch long seam here. So get ready. We're gonna be here a little while. <laughs> if you have any questions, now's the time. I'm just going to sew a nice long straight seam. Okay. So I'm going to use my stiletto to kind of keep this pushed down and help feed it underneath here. Okay, because it will want to kind of bunch up because it's so thick. Yummy. All right, I'm going to come around to the back side a little bit since this is such a long seam. We're going to okay. get a couple of different camera angles. We're going to take, at... a, uh, take a look at what her left hand is doing back here, which I always think is fascinating. I try not to get stabbed too much is the first, first thing. But yeah, keeping um, a little bit of tension on it is important as it's coming through here. Don't expect your machine to do all the work because it won't. All right, I'm just gonna build up a little pile of pins. You can see probably, yeah, that it's all bulked up over here because we wanna keep all the weight on the table as we're working this through. And I'm just trying to keep it as flat as I can as I come around. Okay. And I'm sewing fairly quickly. If you were doing this and you're, you're newer to sewing with Cuddle, take your time. Okay. It's never, never a race. So we didn't talk about thread or needles. Um, I'm using, as always, the 9014 stretch needle. And a stretch needle is important because it will work through your knit fabric better than a universal. So we really recommend it. Uh, if you don't use a un or if you use a universal and not a stretch, you end up with skip stitches a lot. So that's the biggest uh, drawback. All right, and then we're using Metrocene thread from Mettler. So this is fed up just a little bit, and I'm going to let it do that because I don't want to cause a pucker in the cuddle three. Okay, so um, I'm not going to feed it in. Sometimes with the Lux cuddle, I will just like shove it in and have a little pleat in there because you can never see it. <laughs> but with the cuddle three, you can definitely see it. Okay, so I'm rotating it, getting it nice and flat again. I'm going to sew right off the edge here. A little back stitch. Okay, so now I'm going to take these pins because this is almost half done. Are uh, the stretch needle and a ballpoint needle the same? They are not exactly the same. Are they interchangeable? Yes. So you could use a ballpoint as well. Um, the woman that I first learned some of this stuff about sewing with the cuddle it's Mary Gay and she had used the ballpoint and she said it actually did not work as well as the stretch in getting a nice stitch but I have just stuck with stretches so I can't really say what a difference the ballpoint would make so now I'm gonna get this too 
feet under a little. So sometimes when you're working with the fabric, it'll kind of bunch up if you're using one of these um, digital dual feed or a move it foot. Why are there two pins there? <laughs> I'm so confused why there were two pins there. I... Did you see like I had them in there this way? Yeah. I, I don't know what I was doing. If anybody can <laughs> clarify that. Well, I feel like I, I just warped around like a little deja vu. Like I just saw those pins. That definitely isn't where you had the um <laughs> the, the whole, turning hole planned. Oh, no. So <laughs> I'm not uh, sure what happened. Know. Anyway. I, I don't was busy use, reading uh, the comments. I that's okay. I don't use the I haven't <laughs> used the ballpoints. I only use the stretch, but I know that they are basically the same thing. They're slightly different. And the ball has more of a ball at the end. All right, so let's talk about this left hand pulling pressure, pulling the fabric through or pressure mm -hmm. from the backside. Okay. Um, what, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to ask this question so that we can get a distinction. You don't wanna to pull too much or what happens? Uh, if you pull too much, you pull the fabric and it will bend your needle. So right. this is how you break a needle is you pull this and it pulls your fabric backward. And it, so, so here's an example. So if I'm pulling my fabric and my needle comes down here and I'm pulling back here, it pulls my needle. Okay. And a needle will actually just bend here. It's because flexible if I'm pulling, enough to actually just It'll bend. bend. And then what happens is when it comes down the next time it hits the back of your, your foot plate here and snaps it. Got okay. It. So you don't want to pull the way that I describe it to people when we're in class is, so this, I can see there's some bump. I'm gonna pull this forward just a little bit, but I'm not pulling the fabric. I'm just kind of straightening it. So the way that I differentiate it is kind of like if I were, I don't wanna do it like I'm pulling a rope or something like tug of war. And we're obviously not playing tug of war with our machine. I kind of do it a little bit more like if you were helping a, um, a kid across the street. So like, a four-year-old who can cross, but you want a guy to be like, come on, let's go this way. It's kind of that, that feeling is what I'm doing with the fabric is I'm just trying to get it to go where I want it to go by gently guiding it that way. It's a little bit how I do the stiletto. <laughs> like here, didn't you want to go here? That's a good place for you. Okay. And that's what the, uh, the pulling is too. Okay. So I'm going to let that out, let it flatten. And get it to work through, and where it ends, it ends. Okay. All right. So now we've made our whole way across. We pull out these pins, and now we've got our um, the turning hole is here. Okay. Come all the way across. And get all of my pins out. Okay. So now we're going to do it the other way. I'm going to grab the wonder clips in just a second, but I want to get my center seam. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to match that here. So I'm going to start here. So this is, so normally we do end end center and then we go from there, but because these, um, this is so long, I want to do the center. I'm going to use the center basically as an end. Does that make sense? Like yeah, it, divide, kind of? it divides the fabric in half so that you, you have that exact position, you know that exact position. Basically, right. every the way you pin it, it keeps your errors from accumulating. Right. Because exactly what you don't what want is all of, all of uh, any of your difference in top and bottom foot pressure to, you don't want it to all end up in one place. Right. Like if the fabric starts moving, you want it to be small moves. Small many, moves, many, many small moves as opposed to one big move. Right. And I'm just trying to get it so that it's, you know, fairly even as I come along here. And if I try to do it in one fell swoop, it's not as, not as accurate. Okay. So try to pin in between there. All right. Now let me go grab. You could just watch the fabric. Sorry if I trip and fall. Don't, don't die. <laughs> also, she may have demiked me. Nope, there we go. 
Sorry, I didn't realize the stool was actually just behind you. All right. All right, so here we me... go. Teresa's. Oh, but I have hardly any little wonder cups here. Container. What is it? This is a by any. It's a by any. I think it's a hold everything, I think is what it's called. Super cool little thing. And yeah, it's what I keep all my little tools in. Especially for okay. the road. It's yep. great. It is fabulous. Oh, and it's very heavy right now. <laughs> all right. So we're just going to do this at a little at a time here. I'm going to put some pins in or some clips in. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to pin. Okay. So put some clips and then we'll go ahead and put some pins in here. Okay, so we'll try that. See what we can make happen. See if we like it. Okay, I will say that the I've got a couple of different kinds of pins here. So these are the ones that I like a lot that do the that are red and coral. So these are the medium weight ones that you can get. These don't want to go through quite as nicely. They do, but I can feel like oh, I have to I have to be careful not to um, not to bend them as they go in. These are the stronger. Those are the heavyweight ones, and they work really well there. So if you have a, if you have the choice, go for the heavyweight. That is some thick nap. I don't think I checked either what it was, but it's it's at least the at least the ten, if not I more. I felt like it was almost like as long 12? as the seal. Might be Which 12, was, was it seal seals fifteen. Seals fifteen. some pins in here. I think we're going to have to do half of it with the wonder clips and half of it without because I didn't have very many wonder clips in there. Okay, so we'll give those a shot. We'll do it the tried and true way. <laughs> the the um the sidebar question about fofer. Uh, so fofer is by definition acrylic and not washable. Uh, mm -hmm. And the the cuddle minky is polyester and by definition washable. Yes. However, there are some really long napped cuddles like the shaggy, which are into the 30 and 35 millimeter nap length that act and look a lot like faux fur that are washable. So, yes. Um, yes. Just keeping kind of keeping track of what you're asking the internet for <laughs> or your shop for. Exactly. Exactly. And I will say that, like, we've talked about it a lot. Like, this is not a faux fur. It is minky fabric. It is a luxe cuddle. It is long. It is, um, yes, polyester, 100% polyester, and totally machine washable. It's fabulous. I have seen stores refer to it as faux fur. And so we try to get those nipped in the bud when I see them, that it is not a faux fur. So if you see that somewhere, you can always, you know, educate but also be aware that sometimes it'll get listed that way when it actually it isn't the trick is that if it's acrylic you can't wash it right if it's polyester you can yep absolutely yeah it makes a big difference so with this especially like you want to be able to wash this and make sure that it um it stays super nice which does make it really nice that you could you know you can actually wash this stuff but uh, you do want to wash it in cold water and make sure that you don't over dry it. I would probably um, dry this for the most part hanging and then throw it in the dryer and let it do that little tumble thing where things get fluffed. It's fluff cycle is what they call that, I think. Try to get this so that it'll be nice and even in here. I'll go back and pin some more. Okay. Because it is so thick, I'm pinning a lot, and it's a little bit more than I normally do. But I also know that it really likes to to shimmy around on me because it's so thick. So the better I can pin, the less I have to struggle with it. But in the end, we will have a beautiful project. And seriously, it's a, I think it took me about 10 minutes to cut it before the show started. 
I just marked it and cut it. Oh, that is what, something I was going to mention. So, I mean, it's a really quick project. I want my brain. I'll finish my thought first. <laughs> but um, one of the, uh... oh, shoot, now I lost it again. It's a really quick project. We cut it. Oh, one of the things is that when you get cuddle fabric, this included, from the store, you're probably going to want to straighten up one end. Okay. And I just wanted to remind people that that's perfectly normal. This is squirrely thick plush fabric that stores are trying to, to cut fairly straight. So um, make sure that you straighten up an end and measure your 18 inches. And if it doesn't quite work, you can, like I said, you can adjust the <clears throat> width to be 17 inches or if they cut it a little heavy for you, make it 19 inches. Um, just make sure that you straighten up an edge and then measure from there. Okay. All right. So Linda, Linda checked in. The, the nap on, on make is the same as seal. It's 15. It, it is. Okay. So it's, thank you. Yeah. So it's like seal, but with the ridges in it. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's super long and plush. Okay. And we're just going to do a straight seam all the way across at this point. Ouch. That was a good one. So he's always like, she never stabs herself. Oh, I do. <laughs> okay, this is where it gets a little weirder and you can see like it gets funkier just because we're dealing with the two different like levels, lengths of nap. Okay. Take that out, use my stiletto a little bit more to make sure that it feeds under like I want it to. Oops. Right. You're getting cuddle dust on you? Maybe a little. <laughs> Shocking. Might be, might be tickling my nose. Shocking. Yeah, this, because it is the longer one, it's like seal, it's the super fine little fibers. It does like to float. So make sure that when you're, you're cutting it, that you vacuum up those edges or do the little cuddle dust trick with the dryer. And you're going to go ahead and stick it in the dryer with a wet washcloth for a couple of minutes. And it will pretty much get rid of all of the cuddle dust. Oh, my pedal keeps walking away. I wish one of these times I should put a camera to the side so you could see. Like at some point I end up usually like squatted with one leg way over. I'm like, you know, like way over here sewing. And I know probably most of you understand this because even if it's under your desk and the pedal like walks away, you're sewing with the tip of your toe over there. <laughs> Just Anybody got any great tips on that? Uh, I've certainly tried a couple of different things for her. Like uh, I've tried that uh, that foam rolling the material, shelf liner. the shelf liner. Mm -hmm. That's what's and on there I, now. And I double, step, double stuck that to the bottom. And that helps a little. Um, but, you know, eventually it, it wants to move anyway. And yeah. also she, I'm going to want to show this. She sews with her, with her pedal backwards. I do. So that might have something to do with it. <laughs> that is true. I do. I do so with my pedal backward. It's probably one of the the weirder things about me. I've. I think I've only met maybe two students out there who sew with it that way. Lots of barefoot sewers, which I am not today. You normally are a barefoot sewer. I am normally a barefoot sewer, but today we have so much running around. And I was like, I should put shoes on just in case. I don't want to kick anything, step on any pins. All right. So I don't know if you've noticed, but there are a few times that I have to reach back here and I have to um, pull it out from underneath the foot. And that happens sometimes. All right. So here we, we're in Wonder Clip land. If you hadn't noticed, it's actually working pretty darn well. Okay. So I just sew along here. I mean, I say I think it's working pretty darn well, and I <laughs> i don't know. I haven't seen the other side yet. 
Can't see where the other backing is. We're hoping it's it's catching just fine. You're not the only backwards pedal sewer. Oh yay! You, 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 there's a whole tribe. Backward pedal sewers <laughs> unite. We're gonna have a convention next year. We'll be like, why do people sew the other direction? Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. I'm not even sure where it exactly started, but it's it's been a long time. I used to do most of my sewing on an old Foff 130, which if anybody knows those machines, they're lovely. But it had the big, I'm not sure what you would call it, the big flat pedal, like a huge pedal, because it was industrial motor. Almost like a treadle foot. Yeah, it was just like a big thing. And so that's where right. I did a lot of sewing. So it kind of surprises me that I prefer it that way after doing all that, but I do. Okay. So now we've sewn it all the way across. I will say that the wonder clip idea worked just fine for this. Okay. Nice. Teresa approved. Oh. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> totally works. Um, all right. So now we've got it sewn all the way across. So basically we sewed the entire way and then we sewed all of it and left a turning gap. All right. So that's where we are now is this big, beautiful thing. Okay. Not as cute from this side. I'm going to say, make sure my fingers stop bleeding. Um, <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was a pretty good stab. Uh, I'll turn it. Turn out those corners. And I, I have my handy dandy little clover tool. So if I need that to help turn the corners, I can stab that in there. Okay. So I like to turn my corners first. I'll show you on this one. Without sticking my hand in there. Okay. I can kind of, so I've got my corner, I've sewn it. So this is what I do for blankets and stuff is I kind of pop that and you could just push that in. Okay. But if you pop the corners first, push them in first and you kind of make sure that they're out. You could fill it in here and they're pretty square. That makes it easier because then actually when I come in here, I find my hole. There it is. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to grab a corner. I'm going to start pulling that out. So I, I pull from the furthest away that I can get. And that seems to help. I should have made this hole slightly larger. It got a little small because I moved it moved it just a little. Uh, and we're not cutting the We're not clipping the corners. We're not trimming seams. Nope. Nope. We're just going to turn it inside out. Okay. So because it is um, uh, like fairly stiff, those corners are going to turn just fine. See, I told you I should have left that hole a little bit bigger. Well, I don't hear your stitches popping or anything. Not yet. So those little L brackets that you make are winning, right? They now. are winning. They're good. Those reinforced cornered stitches uh, on the turning hole. We're getting there. It's almost the last. There we go. So different. The inside and the outside are just so vastly different looking. Like, wow. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm impressed. Okay. All right. There we go. And because I already turned those corners, I just have to find them and pull them out nicely. Okay. So then they're already... Already there, I can take my stiletto along here. And people that are and literally can... ready to pop, wanting to see how cute this is. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there. Okay. So technically, I would finish all of these edges. Um, you can see how this pops in. If I take my stiletto and I just run it along here, brings that right up. Scritch. Okay. Makes a huge, huge difference in the finished look. So for me, that's, it just, it's night and day, the difference between this and this. I don't know if you can see the two there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So make sure that you take the time. It really doesn't take much, but come along here and finish those edges. We do that with the throws and everything that has seams, the stuffed animals, all of it just makes a big difference. Okay. All right. So let's see. So I'm going to let that hang. And then what I want to do is I want to take, and I'm going to, I'm not going to try it on quite yet. I have one more thing to do. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, that's my bottom. So I would hand sew that shut. 
<laughs> here's my top. And this is kind of dual purpose is one, it's going to let us know which side is the top. Okay, and also going to get these seams to lay a little bit flatter. Okay, so come along here. I'm going to use the Wonder Clips because they actually work really well for this. The big long green ones are even better, in my opinion, for this top stitching. Okay, we're going to clip all the way across if I can. I think on the other one, I ended up actually only doing part of it. So I'm gonna clip it and then I wanna look, hold on half a second, I wanna do a little, little brainstorming. So when I tried this the other day, I did it with uh, a fabric that didn't match inside and, that, and I tried it with a collar and that also didn't really, didn't really work. So. I uh, didn't work as well as I wanted to. Okay, so I did stitch all the way across. So I'm going to stitch from here all the way over to here, just a top stitch right along this edge. And move these pins. And that'll be sort of the finishing touch. And what that'll do is, like I said, finish up the top so it stays nice and flat. And then it's also going to let me know which side is the top. So the bottom, I'm just going to let it be. I'm just going to hand sew that shut and let it be. So I'm going to lock my stitch. I am going to bring that up to a 3.5. To do some finagling with all of that, get it to lay where I want it to. Okay, and I up that stitch length because I really don't need it to hold anything. I just need it to come across here really nicely. Okay, so if I'm having issues, it isn't really doing it too much, but I can see just a little it wants to push forward. That's when we can use the stiletto a little bit. I think, it, I think I already hit the ground. Yeah, probably did. It's pretty good about getting shoved off the table even with the flat side <laughs> even with it. the flat side it's because i shove it all over my fabric okay so i just keep relaying it down make sure that it's flat make my way along it honestly is makes a huge difference the just the little things of not letting it get too out of control on you keeping keeping control of where it's at what it's doing Okay. Those clips worked really well. Thanks to whoever originally suggested that and made Hawk say something about it. <laughs> it was easier for this part for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna get to here. I'm gonna do another little lock stitch. Clip my thread and take it out. All right. Oh, there it is over here. Okay, so now when we do the top stitch, depending on the fabric, this is gonna look differently. Okay, but we definitely want to scritch that out mm -hmm. to kind of put it back to where it was so that from this side, we can't see that there was ever any stitching done. So that was again, like a, a, just a half an inch from the top? It was about a half an inch, yep. Okay. okay. Um, and that just makes this lay really nicely. But like I said, we'll want to make sure that all of that comes out so that you can't see it from the outside. Not that you can see it like terribly noticeably, but I think this looks nicer. Got it. Okay, so we're gonna do that. I'm just gonna scratch it a little bit. I'll finish it more later. And then we'll get nice pictures with somebody else as the model. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad my daughter went home. All right. Make sure I clip my threads there. Oh, we did, didn't talk about this, uh, about cutting it first. I actually just used a rotary cutter and, um, and then vacuumed it just to get a really nice straight edge. But you can absolutely use the, the blade too for less, less mess. Okay, so here's my top. If you are um, you know, one of those who have uh, your own labels or something, you can absolutely put your own label in here. be really pretty. Um, I do them sometimes. I have, I have ones that say, um, you've probably seen the ones that say, P.S. I love you, which are, I, um, and I put those in things sometimes too. I'm gonna cut my threads. Pink, pink. Okay, 
threads are cut. Are we ready for this? Yes. Okay, so here we go. So here's- Very excited. Here's how fancy it looks by itself. It's really, it doesn't look all that fancy, but it the is. The fabric is gorgeous. The fabric so, is gorgeous. So, so you're just it. going, <gasps> it's like a little wearable blanket. Look at how glamorous. <laughs> It is really nice. I really do love it. I think it's beautiful. This color is gorgeous. You can do the thing where you wear it down around your shoulders. We were talking, um, Rose is the one who helps me. Mm -hmm. Rose is the one who helps me with the patterns. I'm sorry, I turned the light. Ta-da, okay. Oh, I love it. Super nice, super nice. So you can see the length that it comes just past hips, I guess. Uh -huh. You could, we were talking about, it'd be really sweet. You could put um, a big loop, like doing a, um, I forgot the name of it, like a, I think it's called, a French, I think it's called a Taylor's Tack. It's a French something too, but I think Taylor's Tack is the idea that I'm thinking is that you could kind of make a chain that went across here that was really pretty flat that you could stick a button through. Mm. Does that make sense? Put mm -hmm. a button here and kind of be able to loop it, that it would hold on to you. Um, you could do little magnetic snaps in here, the, um, the where they have the little magnets in there, you can sew them in. So all sorts of ideas that if you wanted to, that you could actually like get it to hold, or you could just have it so that it's open and it lays here. It's super nice. So one of the reasons I talked about, you want the, um, the Lux cuddle or the cuddle itself to match because you want um, you want it to um, not show so much when I'm here. Okay, so when you have it here, you're not going to see it so much. The other thing is that the cuddle will actually hold on to your clothing. So the cuddle three, because of the nap, the way that the nap goes down, it kind of catches and holds. So originally we thought about doing it with lining fabric. We have silky satin, which would be beautiful. But the silky satin, the thing that always drives me crazy, it just slides off. So this actually keeps it so that it stays on your shoulders much better. So I can sit here and I can move my hands and it doesn't just fall right off. Okay. Got it. So functional. <laughs> I, it was functional. So there was a reason that we kind of chose the fabrics that we did and um, why we did. So there you go. You could put like a little cash pocket in here. if You, <laughs> you could do all sorts of things. I store my wallet in there. Um, yeah. All sorts of things. So there. That's yummy. You can see the length of it there. <laughs> I'm like trying to see. It's close. We're trying to get it. There we go. He had to unhook. So you can see how long it is. Oh, if you wanted leash. to, you could absolutely do top stitch all the way around. I like the way it looks here. And if you get all of these edges pulled out, you won't even notice the seam along the front here. All right. All right. There we go. <laughs> all right. So there, there's your Lux stole for the week. All right. So you'll be ready for holiday parties, for New Year's Eve, all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, I think it's a really lovely project. The pattern is, is available as a download now at shannonfabrics.com slash blog. And you can download your own. The mink is available widely and comes in a bunch of different fabrics. Like I said, it is totally doable in lots of other um, of our Lux Cuddles too. So um, I'd love to see what you're going to make. If you have not joined our I Love Cuddle group on Facebook, you can join that. We'll, um, we, that's where I'd like you to post it when you're done. It's a great group on Facebook with lots of people who are super interested in working with cuddle fabric and lots of inspiration over there. I think it's a fab group. So if you are not a part of it, join us over on I Love Cuddle Fabric on Facebook. Uh, we have a winner. Do we have a winner? We have a winner. <laughs> we have a winner. And the winner is Margaret M. So Margaret, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sharing the video with your friends and family. And if you will private message us, uh, Shannon Fabrics on Facebook, or you can uh, email us. I think the email is info at Shannon Fabrics. You can um, send us your information, your shipping information, and we will send a kit out to you ASAP think is that is that it except for the tour a, a big happy holidays and the and yeah we talked okay. about the tour so let's a little do bit. The, let's do it let's do the tour overlay michael can you put that up and let's show people where we're going so they can come see us on the road next year we are hitting the road in january this is where we're going we're first we're going to kick it off in las vegas at so yeah quilting on the fourth so if you are in the west coast there are a few places here i know we've gotten some um, people asking for us on the West Coast. So here we are. This is your chance. So the fourth at So Yeah on January 11th, we'll be heading down towards San Diego and going to El Cajon at Cozy Creative Center. 
Uh, January 18th, we'll be doing a live from Road to California. I will also be teaching four classes at Road. So if you're interested at all, you can go to Road to ca.com and search for my last name Coates. And you'll be able to find the classes that I'm teaching there. We're doing all sorts of fun things, including tops and blankets and stuffed animals. So it'll be great. Uh, January 25th, we'll be out at Mole Queen Sewing Center in Mesa, Arizona. February 1st, we're gonna do a studio visit with Rustic Horseshoe who does um, stuffed animal sewing patterns. We did the Nutty Nag with her yes. like a year and a half ago or so. So we're going to uh, go out and visit her. February 8th, we'll be at the Quilters Market in Tucson, Arizona. February 15th, it's a secret to you and me. February 22nd, <laughs> it's Cupcake Quilts in Houston, Texas, which I have taught at before. I'm really excited to go back. And then in March, will be March 1st, we kick it off at So Much Love Quilt Store in Granbury, Texas, which is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Then we head east a little bit further. We go to Mississippi, to Ridgeland. We'll visit the Cotton Blossom Shop, which also I taught at before. And uh, they're fabulous. Then March 15th will be the end of this season's tour. And that is at Willow Tree Fabrics in Decatur, Alabama. So um, go ahead and move the camera back up probably. <laughs> It was relaxing for a second. I was. <laughs> so we will be going all over the place. So like I said, January 4th, we kick off the tour. We will be in the RV. You can come see us along the way. Super fun. We've got lots of giveaways and um, fun stuff to do. And any of those stores, if you are interested in going, just reach out to the store. Most of them don't have a way to sign up for it yet, except that you can let them know that you're interested and get onto it like a waiting list or whatever the store is doing for that. So let them know that you're interested Then you can get signed up right away. All right. So we'll be doing the lives from those stores as well as teaching classes so most of the shops I'll be teaching we'll be doing a sew together Tuesday live which everybody can watch obviously and you can in, get introduced to new stores all across America which is going to be super fun but we also teach a lot of in-person workshops so make sure that you um, find out if you're in the area you can come and take a class with me it's super fun I've heard um, <laughs> the feedback's all been great. I think we have a great time. So um, we are looking forward to being out on the road in January. I can't wait to see you out there. It's going to be great, right? Anything else we need to add? Huh? I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us again today. I look forward to seeing your stoles as well. Happy holidays and happy sewing. <laughs>